I'm the president here at Gaston State Community College. And please let me say to you that your presence speaks volumes. I appreciate for all the places you could have been today and the things that you perhaps needed to do today that you chose to come and spend this time with us. So thank you very much. Just in case you didn't get your devotional time in this morning, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now I'm an early riser. 3.30 to 4.30 is the right time for me. Five o'clock I have overslept. I love to get up in the mornings because I feel like I have a clean slate and a new opportunity to get it right. And I can't wait to get up in the mornings. And almost every morning I say to myself, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And by the way, every day is a gift. Every day is a blessing. And what's really cool about today is it's a gift, it's a blessing, and it's a defining moment in time. You've had those moments in your own personal life, that moment that seemed to define who you are or who you become. It sort of becomes something that lives in perpetuity with you and perhaps becomes your legacy. We have those moments in time, those defining moments in our families, in your business, in your organization, in our community, and in our state. And today is one of those days that this is a good day, a blessed day. It is the Genesis. Today we are going to share with you and made, we've made some decisions that will impact this community. It will impact our service area. It will impact this region of our state. It will impact the great state of Alabama. In positive ways, too many ways for me to name, too many na ways for us to count, but let me assure you of this today. We will change the lives of our citizens for good forever. Let that sink in. That as a community, we have the capacity, you, I, we, in our respective pieces of the work in this community, we have the capacity to change the lives of this community, the lives of the people in this community, our families and our friends, for good and forever. That's our calling. That's our mission. In case you got up this morning and said, why am I here, Lord? Your mission and your calling is to change the lives for others for good and do so forever. And so if I could borrow from Mission Impossible, your mission, should you choose to accept it. That mission per the Alabama Community College system is dedication to the excellence in delivering academic education, adult education, and workforce development. Chancellor Baker, we accept our mission. Gadsden State, more specifically, our mission is to be a comprehensive community college that is affordable, accessible, and that prepares our diverse student population for success through quality education, innovative workforce development, and meaningful community engagement. Chancellor Baker, we accept that mission. From the vision of our chancellor came Aspire 2030. <clears throat> Aspire 2030 is the conceptual framework that focuses our community colleges on how we serve our communities using best practices, using best strategies, and innovative approaches. 
our directive from Chancellor Baker for Aspire 2030. The directives were be creative, be innovative, be aspirational, and think outside the box. Creative, check. We did that. Innovative, check. Aspirational, check. And thinking outside of the box, check. And Chancellor Baker, for good measure, we chose to burn the box because we were fearful that we might take a default back into thinking in the box and putting ourselves back in the box. So we burned the box. We want to be innovative and not default back to that thinking. So what did we do here at Gadsden State that was creative, that was innovative, that was aspirational, that was thinking outside of the box and aligned itself with the mission of the Alabama Community College system and with this college's mission? We proposed an advanced manufacturing center, a state-of-the-art, 50,000 square foot facility, a place where we can deliver workforce development training for short-term certificates, for long-term certificates, for associate implied science, for rapid training, for reskilling, for upskilling, or you select from the buffet because we're here to serve. I am proud to announce today that a new advanced manufacturing center will be built here in Gadsden to serve our region. <laughs> Thank you, you all were absolutely on script because I put applause there. So I, I'm glad you uh, aligned with my thinking. When you have time, I hope that you will go to the East Broad campus across the street. You'll see the sign there that denotes the location of the new Advanced Manufacturing Center. As you all know, recently ALDOT announced the Eastern Connector from I-759 to Highway 431, something our community needs, we've been waiting for, and we are excited about that. The Eastern Corridor, or the Eastern Connector, however, has an impact on our college. It actually will come across part of the backside of our East Broad campus. As a matter of fact, as luck would have it, and I think it's called Murphy's Law, it just came straight across where we were gonna put our advanced manufacturing center. And so, we were willing to pivot we were willing to work with the Alabama Department of Edu uh, excuse me, Alabama uh, Department of Transportation, but I do want you to know that has impacted us, and we've had to make adjustments as a result of that. And the adjustment in that location has increased our cost sizably uh, to the tune of several million dollars. The adjustment's going to require us to address some existing buildings sewage and water drainage challenges, road circulation, and some additional site prep that we frankly had not been planning for. And so as I started, I did the devotional, this is the day that the Lord hath made, we might end it with a love offering. <laughs> but speaking of the financial support, I want to take a moment in time to allow us to recognize so many people who've supported us. I dare not begin to try to call names. I want to recognize groups of people who've been so um, important and pivotal and inspirational through this process. And so the first group of people, and by the way, we spread your chairs out so you weren't sitting in each other's lap and it would give you a chance to be able to see our videos that we're gonna share with you and also gives you a chance to stand up. And you may have a chance to stand up on multiple occasions because you may fit into several groups that I'm about to call out. But for those of you who've made a commitment of financial support to us, I'd like for you to stand, business, industry, council, commissioners, organizations, if you've made a financial commitment to this call, I ask you to stand, but I also would say, if you hadn't made the commitment yet, but you're going to, you go ahead and get on up too. We'll take you. So please stand if you've made commitments 
to our Advanced Manufacturing Center. Thank you so very, very much. Business, industry, city councils, county commissioners, thank you for that commitment. <clears throat> If you helped us during the planning and the preparation and the design for Aspire, and so many of you did, would you please stand? Maybe you completed a survey, you came to a meeting. Please stand if you helped us in planning for Aspire 2030. Many people supported us in that process. Thank you. So many have supported in different ways, financial letters of support, encouragement along the way. And so let me acknowledge a few other groups. If you are representing any of our U.S. Congress members, would you please stand? I think we have representatives from Tommy Tuberville's office, Congressman Adderholt, and also from Congressman Rogers. Thank you so much. If you're one of our state legislators, and by the way, you guys and ladies are so important to us. Please stand if you're one of our state legislators. Thank you so much for your work and your support. We sincerely appreciate you. <clears throat> Anyone from the governor's office, and I do give regrets on behalf of our governor. She is so supportive. And uh, I know Jenny Shaver, Representative Shaver, is going to share accommodation from the governor in just a few minutes. If you're one of our board of trustees, our chancellor, if you would stand, Mr. Jimmy Baker, or if you're with our ACCS office, and there are many of them spread around, would you all please stand? This absolutely would not have happened without our chancellor, Mark Salmon, Barry May, Boone, Heiner, Susan Price, many of you who've supported us. If you are a mayor in our community, please stand. All of our mayors, if you would stand, thank you so much. And if your city council representatives are here, let's have our city council folks also stand. I see Mr. Back, thank you so much. County commissioners, if you're with county commissioners or our county government, I know I saw Judge Haskell, I think, also. If you're with our, any of our counties, would you please stand? We appreciate all of you. <laughs> Sheriff Horton, I saw him. If you're with sheriff or sheriff's departments, any of our police or security, would you please stand? We certainly appreciate you. We honor you, we respect you, thank you so much. Chambers of Commerce have been very supportive of us. Chambers of Commerce, if you're with any of our Chambers of Commerce, would you please stand? Thank you. We have a number of CEOs and employees of business and industry in the room with us. Would you all please stand? Let us thank you for those partnerships. If you are a partnering state workforce agency, and there's a lot of them, and I'll miss somebody, Alabama Workforce Council, East Alabama Works, AIDT, Alabama Career Centers, et cetera, and et cetera, please stand. Your partnership is important to us also. Thank you. We're very appreciative of our Cardinal Foundation. That's an important group of folks to us. If you're with our Cardinal Foundation, would you please stand? We want to acknowledge you. Thank you for being supporters. The Alumni Association, if you're part of our Alumni Association, thank you so much. See Heather New, others. Baisha, thank you so much, Pam. <clears throat> Superintendents, a once upon a time was one. If you're a superintendent here with us today, would you please stand? I know that we have uh, Dr. Alan Cosby, Mr. Colgrove in the back from Atala. Thank you so much. If you're with one of our local boards of education, we have a number of those folks too. Would you please stand? We appreciate you. Your relationship with us is important. Thank you for that. If you're a K-12 partner at all, stand up. K-12 folks in the room with us. 
Thank you. Alabama Technology Institute, Greg uh, Bennett, preceded me in the interim capacity. I saw Mr. Bennett. If you're with Alabama Technology Network, would you please stand? That's an important partnership and relationship. Thank you so much. And while all of these groups are important, I want to tell you that the next two groups are important to my heart, as all of you are, but they just have a special, special place. If you are a part of the Gadsden State faculty, staff, or an administrator, would you please stand? And while you're standing, <laughs> stay standing. <laughs> Chancellor Baker, I know this could be debated and could be argued and would be done so among my president friends, but you are looking at the most outstanding, awesome group of faculty and staff and administrators in this state, and I am pleased and privileged to work alongside you. Thank you so much to all of you. And I absolutely saved the best for last, and that is our Gadsden State Community College students. If you are a student of ours, will you please stand? We have some SGA ambassadors, FAME students. Let's hear it for FAME. We are proud of our students. As we think about students, and I read a quote many years ago as I was working on the Career Connection Center when I was in Hoover City Schools as a superintendent, and one of the things that uh, I read as I was sort of wrapping my head around career technical better and workforce development was a quote from Mike Rowe, Dirty Jobs. And he was talking about the education of our students. And here's what he said. He said, we are lending money we don't have to kids who can't pay it back to train them for jobs that no longer exist. Let that sink in. We are lending money we don't have to kids who can't pay it back to train them for jobs that no longer exist. And he ended that quote by saying, that's nuts. Our students have not chosen that nutty path. They see the value of quality education and skills training that's being offered at Gadsden State Community College, which is affordably priced, preparing them for high demand jobs with the benefit of high wage returns. The building of the Advanced Manufacturing Center is further assurance to our students and to this community that we have no interest in teaching defunct courses in preparation for obsolete jobs. Rather, we will be cutting edge. This opportunity, the Advanced Manufacturing Center, would not be a reality without the leadership of Mr. Jimmy Baker, the Chancellor for the Alabama Community College system. And I'm going to introduce Mr. Baker to you in just a few minutes, but rather than me jumping up and coming back and forth, let me say to you, here's how we'll proceed after I sit down. I will share a few things about Mr. Baker. Following him will be Representative Jenny Shaver. She's a member of the Alabama House of Representatives for the 39th District. And uh, recently I was in a meeting where you were given significant credit for your laser focus on Highway 431. And uh, for those coming out of Cherokee community, you know how valuable that is along with uh, Senator Andrew Jones and just their advocacy for their community. <clears throat> we'll follow that with some videos. We're delighted that U.S. Senator Tommy Tuberville, AKA Coach, has uh, given us a congratulatory video as has Congressman Mike Rogers uh, has done so, and uh, has Congressman Robert Adderholt. And we're appreciative, and you'll see those videos. 
That will be followed by our friend, Dr. Alan Cosby, who's going to speak on behalf of the K-12 side of the world and our collaborative and partnering relationship, followed by the division leader at Hyundai Manufacturing, Mr. Michael Gaines. And concluding us will be Dean Alan Smith, who deserves so much credit and so much acknowledgement for this work. And he'll share about the programs to be offered and some, of, some slides and some, some renderings that'll give you an opportunity to take a glimpse at that Advanced Manufacturing Center. But let me step back to Mr. Baker for just a moment. Mr. Baker can be described as a visionary leader. He's passionate about his work, his calling, and his mission. He is absolutely a strategic thinker and a strategic planner. And I have learned so much, Mr. Baker, from you in this short period of time of a year and a half of being president. I'm honored to have been selected. I'm blessed to be, will, to be able to serve and to, to serve alongside you. Chancellor Baker, thank you so much. Thank you for honoring this morning, us this morning, and, and please come and share with us. You know, I probably got my first real introduction to Gadsden, Alabama, many, many years ago. There was a guy who represented this community in the legislature, and uh, I happened to be state finance director at the time, and he had a problem with this building. And he found his way to my office began talking, and later on he found his way back again and began to explain the need for an improvement. And over time, we figured out a way to make it happen. And Joe Ford made sure that I took care of the leaking in this building. That's been a long time ago but that was my real introduction to working with this community. Uh, I had the occasion to sit down with the Board of Trustees of the Community College System and the then Chancellor was having to retire because of health. Great guy, good guy. He's still suffering from those problems. And the board asked me, would I consider the job? And I said, well, let's talk about that. Tell me what you see in the future and what are you willing to do? Because I will tell you up front, if we start down a path that is different than what has been followed, there are gonna be people who will be unhappy but I have no interest in building a political kingdom. I have an interest in finding a way to make this system move forward. And I say this on a regular basis. I only say it because I believe it. The community college system, if we do our job, is the best vehicle to bring about significant change in the state of Alabama. Now, I'm an Alabamian. I've never lived outside of this state except for a little while while I was wearing army green. And I find that we have everything we need to be a better state than what we're demonstrating. And I'm excited about what we're doing. I'm excited about the opportunities in this state. But then I also hear things like, you know, we have the lowest unemployment among many, many other states. True. Unemployment's about 3%, maybe a little less sometimes. I'm interested in how many people are working. And I'm interested in how many people are not working 
that need to be working. See, that story doesn't get talked about. If you look at the scale of our participation rate, of the rate of people seeking jobs, we're about 45th in the nation. We're headed in the wrong direction. We must find a way, and the way has to be inclusive of K through 12. It has to be a common goal, but we must find a way to get folks into the labor force. I was talking with someone earlier this morning. It's great news when someone comes in and announces a Toyota Mazda or Mercedes, and I appreciate all of those. Don't, don't take it differently. I appreciate those major industries. So they come to town and they offer a higher wage than what is being paid in many instances or could be paid. So they hire the existing labor that's already working. That's okay. It's okay only if we have done our job and have a fill of people who have been trained who are ready to fill those other jobs. So I talked to the Board of Trustees about that very issue. And they said, well, you know, we're willing to do whatever we can do. We'll have to have partners in the process. Over the last several years, we've managed to be kind of conservative and we've saved some money. Then the board decided to do a bond issue, the board of trustees. We pay far out of our office. We accumulated some more money. And then the state legislature passed a bond issue. We got about 100 million out of that. So we put together about $300 million. That, I'm, I don't mind telling you, is probably the single largest investment in facilities and equipment that has occurred since the original buildings were built for the community college system. You know, we understand the need for workforce in this state, but somehow we haven't told the story of what it really is and what we really need to do. So we looked at everything that was needed. There was another issue that had to be resolved. When I took office as chancellor, there were nine interim presidents out of 24. Since that time, there's been several other resignations and retirements. I'm happy to say we have every college today. The president's office is occupied by someone who wants to be there. They're there because the decision was made that they would be the best to be there and make things happen for the benefit of the community and the students. Not because of politics. And we have probably, in my opinion, and I'm selfish, but I'm gonna stay that way, we probably have the best staff of presidents that we've ever had collectively across the state. So it's time to move forward. We have announced already in two other locations the development of an advanced manufacturing center, and we probably need to make that a more exp explanation of what all that means. It means whatever is needed in that community to train people to fill the jobs that are available. And you know, we actually have been guilty of talking to business and industry and asking them, what do we really need to be doing? Not just because there was a curriculum put together 25 years ago. We know today from talking with them. We formed an organization of the executive directors of the various associations so they can come in and talk with us. And because of that, we created a lot of very short courses for training people in hospitality and restaurants and those kinds of things. 
Our business is to do whatever we can do to make the community that our schools are located in and serve do the very things that is most beneficial for that community and do it at a reasonable cost so that people can afford to take advantage of it. So I'm excited. I'm excited that today I'm back in this building and I'm here because of the energy that has been demonstrated by the leadership of this school and of the commitment that has been made by this community. And let me, let me add something to it because I want to use that as for the first time, I think for the first time, I'm pretty positive we've done the research. We're having cities and counties to come in and, can, and say to us, can we help? I had a city the other day came to me and said, hey, we'll contribute to the construction costs or we'll contribute to the equipment. We'll contribute various ways. We now have formed a foundation in this state made up of people that are leaders in the state, that in their intents, their sole intent is to raise money so that if, if Jane, a young lady who has a child, needs a job, but she needs training, but she can't pay for the fuel or she can't pay for the babysitter so she can go to the class. That's the purpose of the foundation. Alabama Powers on them, the League of Municipalities, the County Commissioner Association, Power South, just go on down the list. We have people who are committed to moving this state forward. In addition to the many other great things that are happening in the state, and there are a lot of good things happening, but we've got to cure the problem of finding the labor to fill the jobs or else we can't succeed at the level that we should succeed. So I'm excited about this opportunity. I'm excited about what's happening here in this community. I'm excited about what's happening across the state because I believe this over the next three or four years, and I know there's some new legislators, uh, you know, we're looking at a, a time period that I've never observed. I served as finance director for the state. I made budgets. I always had to figure out how can I do this and shift this money over here or find a way to do this or find a way to take care of Joe Ford's problem or something of that nature. That isn't the case today. The economy is generating revenue at a level that was unexpected. It doesn't mean we ought to do foolish things, but we need to invest in things that are going to make this state a better place to live for everyone. For everyone. And it can only happen if we work together as a team, the legislative body, the education institutions and organizations, K through 12, the community colleges, and the colleges. See, one of the differences about the community college versus my friends, and I have a world of friends in the four-year schools. They're good, and they serve a very valuable role. Don't ever forget that. But most of our students, most of our students come from in-state. Most of them are neighbors and a vast majority of them stay in this state once they are trained or certified or whatever the case may be. That's an important issue. So as we go forward, I just want you to be observant and give consideration to what's happening in this school, in your schools, K through 12, and in the colleges in this neighborhood because I believe this, if we all focus on making life better, life will be much better for everyone. I'm not an academic guy, but I'm guilty of occasionally reading 
And I'm going to quote something that I, those of you who have heard me heard this before. Rudyard Kipling and his poem, If. And the closing stanza says, If you can talk with men and keep your virtue, and walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foe nor loving friend can hurt you, and all men count with you but none too much, if you can forgive those unforgiven minutes with 60 seconds worth of distance run, the world is yours and all that is in it. And what more, you'll be a man, my son. I'd like for this audience to think about what can happen in this community over the next 24 months. During that time, we'll be building a building. During that time, we'll be writing and planning curriculum. During that time, you will have elections and you will do this or that or the other. But there's nothing keeping us from being a leader in this state as a community with a plan to move forward. And that's what I want this organization, this institution, this Advanced Manufacturing Center to be. I want it to become a core along with the cardinal spirit of what can happen in a community that decides, hey, we have problems, we're gonna to talk to our neighbors, but yet we're gonna find a way to deal with these problems and move forward and make life better for everyone. When we do that, we will be the state that all of you wish to have and the state I'm excited about. So I appreciate you coming today. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your support of the leadership of this school and the faculty and the staff and the members that are here and the working. But don't forget, this is about you and what you can do and what we can do collectively to move forward. And with that, I'll close and I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Kathy. Good morning. It is my privilege and pleasure to be with you this morning for this announcement. It is so exciting. Um, it's good to be back in Gadsden with so many friends and familiar faces that I see in the audience. If, uh, my name is Jenny Shaver, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm the state representative for some surrounding counties. So why is it so important to me to be here and be a part of this announcement today? Well, I'm a Gadsden girl. And I grew up just a few blocks over, literally, with this campus in my backyard. And Gadsden State Community College has been important to me and my family. Every single member of my family, from my parents, my sister, my husband, who also grew up just a few blocks away, and every single one of our children, at one point in time, has been a student here at Gadsden State. So it has benefited me and my family. So that's my personal pleasure and, and how much Gadsden State means to me. Um, but I, I want to uh, tell you, we, it's not just what happens here at Gadsden State is not just good for the city of Gadsden. What happens at Gadsden State is not just good for Etowah County. But what happens at Gadsden State is good for our entire region, including the campuses, the additional campuses that we have. Um, so what happens here doesn't stay here. Uh, what happens here goes with the individuals who pass through here. And I'm one of those and, and proud of it and, and glad to get to be a part of this announcement today. Um, on to the business at hand, the governor sends her sincere regret that she is not able to be here for this announcement because this kind of investment in our community colleges is right in line with her vision and her plans for the state of Alabama and for our workforce and moving the state forward. So this is the kind of thing that is near and dear to her heart and she could not be here today, but she wanted to extend her best wishes and sends this commendation. 
Whereas the Gadsden State Community College Advanced Manufacturing Center will provide Gadsden State Community College with the ability to rapidly train more students for high demand, high wage positions in a 50,000 square foot facility. And whereas high tech careers in the industrial automation, robotics, electronic engineering, precision manufacturing, machining, and mechanical design technology se sectors will become available for dual enrollment students, traditional college students, adult learners, students pursuing non-degree and short-term students. And whereas the Gadsden State Community College Advanced Manufacturing Center has the ability to serve all ages, including providing K through 12 students with educational opportunities that prepare them for post-secondary opportunities and direct entry into the workforce. And whereas the Gadsden State Community College Advanced Manufacturing Center aligns with my Strong Start, Strong Finish initiative by students rapidly earning stackable post-secondary credentials in, in line with Alabama's in-demand occupations. And whereas the Gadsden State Community College Advanced Manufacturing Center will have a tremendous impact in addressing the workforce needs in Gadsden State's service area and whereas the state-of-the-art center will provide important contributions to Alabama's workforce and economic development for many years to come, and whereas the Gaston State Community College Advanced Manufacturing Center's curriculum will be driven by the needs of local industry and will provide delivery systems that are sufficiently flexible to meet the diverse needs of both students and industry. Now, therefore, I, Governor Kay Ivey, Governor of Alabama, do hereby commend Gadsden State Community College on its announcement of the Advanced Manufacturing Center that will modernize and positively impact the college, the community, and Alabama's strengthening workforce. Um, President uh, Murphy, if you will, uh, come and accept this commendation, and I will uh, end by saying... And I will close by saying, as the governor often does, under President Murphy's and Chancellor Baker's leadership, I believe that the best is yet to come for Gaston State Community College. Hello, everyone. This is Tommy Tuberville, your United States Senator from the great state of Alabama. But as always, you can call me Coach. You know, I wanted to extend my congratulations on the announcement of your new Advanced Manufacturing Training Center. Business is booming in the great state of Alabama, which brings increased workforce demands. These demands create new opportunities for Alabama students, but it is important we provide accessible pathways to these opportunities. And that is exactly what you're doing at Gadsden State. You are making it possible for students to get the training necessary to meet industry needs, your efforts in rapid workforce development ensure that Alabama will continue to be a home for high demand STEM related industries. I look forward to seeing all the great things that come from your new facility. So congratulations again and best wishes for a safe and successful school year ahead. Thank you and God bless. Hi, I'm Congressman Mike Rogers of Alabama's 3rd Congressional District. I've long fought for Alabama students to have access to great STEM programs. So I'm really proud to be able to see Gaston State Community College announce their new state-of-the-art Advanced Manufacturing Center. It's going to provide students with great opportunities they don't have now. So congratulations to Gaston State Community College on this great achievement. This is Robert Adderholt, Congressman from the 4th Congressional District, and I want to congratulate Gadsden State on breaking ground on the new Advanced Manufacturing Center on campus. A state-of-the-art investment for students from kindergarten to college, spawning highly trained professionals for years to come. The dual enrollment and technical programs that are offered at our Alabama colleges are a fundamental part of workforce development that helps us develop and maintain Alabama's best in everything from robotics to mechanical design. Gadsden State has always been a fundamental institution, not only for the city of Gadsden, but also for the state of Alabama. So I'm proud to see you leading the way in developing a strong workforce for our industrial base. 
I'm sorry I can't be with you today due to having been in Washington for voting, but I want to congratulate you on this new center and I look forward to its impact not only on our area, but also on our state. Good morning. It's a great day in Etowah County and a great day in the service area for Gadsden State Community College. As superintendent of the Etowah County Schools, I am thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to partner with Dr. Murphy, Chancellor Baker, all of our industry partners because K-12, uh, Mr. Baker mentions we need a workforce. We've got the workforce in our hallways right now and we want to take that workforce, develop that workforce, bring them to Gadsden State and enhance help our entire region and our entire county. I want to say that on behalf of our 1,100 employees, our 8,500 students, this is a great day for every one of them. I want to also thank two of our school board members that are in attendance today, Ms. Scarlett Farley and Mr. Danny Golden. They have been instrumental in everything we do in our school system. When I was first approached uh, about this a couple years ago by Dean Smith, we talked about what we could do to partner together. Currently, we have a career tech center, which is located in Tala, and our director, Mr. Mark Stancil, is in the back. Mr. Stancil, will you stand up, please? I want to recognize you really quickly. Those of you that are in business and industry, you know Mr. Stancil well. I think he's the best career technical director in the state of Alabama, without a doubt. He has grown our programs, and he has grown our enrollment throughout many years. Also, we have a record enrollment coming to our Career Tech Center this year, so we need this facility to help us with our space issues. And so this will be great. He and I talked a little bit yesterday about how this might look. We've talked with Dean Smith about that, and this will help us expand what we do, expand opportunities for our kids each and every day in dual enrollment and other opportunities that we can provide. And so our partnership with Gadsden State, it's invaluable. Many of our teachers have uh, went to Gadsden State throughout the years. I myself am a graduate of Gadsden State Community Colleges. So we are linked together as a school system. We're linked together forever. And this just is one more link in the pipeline to make this community, Etowah County, our entire region better. I wanna thank all our elected officials that have helped this come to fruition. Thank everyone that's involved in this because as a lifelong resident of Etowah County, this is a very exciting day and the future will change in our county. It begins in K-12 and we want to support that 100%. So thank you for the opportunity, Dr. Murphy. We look forward to being a great partner throughout this process. Thank you. Hi, good morning, I'm Michael Gaines. I'm the division leader of Manufacturing Planning Control Division at Honda in Lincoln, Alabama. And it's honestly an honor to be here with you today. And I say it's an honor for many reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is it's always exciting to talk about the growth and the expansion in our state, especially when it comes to education. Second reason is because my family has a long legacy in Etowah County. Both my parents went to Etowah High School and my grandfather, many, many years ago, at the age of 18, started at Republic Steel right here in Gadsden. And after a 40 plus year career, he retired and he was very proud of his career in manufacturing and we were too. And so I have a strong connection to manufacturing in this community. I'm also proud to represent the Honda Manufacturing of Alabama Associates in the kickoff and the acknowledgement of this Advanced Manufacturing Center and all the opportunities it'll create for the people of East Alabama. It's honestly really exciting to see how this center can help grow the opportunities for all the residents of East Alabama and our community. You know, we began production almost exactly 20 years ago in Lincoln, Alabama, right down the road from here. And from since the first Odyssey rolled off the line through today, we've had a proud, long relationship with our community and with our education systems. We've grown to become the largest manufacturing plant in the Honda's fleet, and we've also grown to produce some of the most American-made vehicles in the world. Four of the top 10 most American-made vehicles are built right here in Lincoln, Alabama. We have the ability to produce 340,000 vehicles right there, and we're sole producers of the Honda Odyssey minivan, the Pilot and Passport SUVs, and the Honda Ridgeline truck, and all the engines that power them. You know, we have 4,500 proud associates that build those vehicles, and many of those associates come from right here in Etowah County and in 
nearby Calhoun County. And we appreciate the partnerships with state government, local government, and the education systems to help prepare those associates for their careers at Honda. Our facilities grown, our teams grown, and honestly, our technology, our processes, and our product have grown. They've become more innovative. They've become more advanced. And so that's challenged us and all of us in this room today to grow our students and our associates and our workforce and advance them in the technology that's required for industry. Not only Honda's industry, but all industry in the state of Alabama. You know, like all automotive manufacturers, we continue to prepare for the future while trying to most importantly prepare our workforce for the future with advanced technologies and advanced training. How do we do that? We do it through programs like this Advanced Manufacturing Center and all the other partnerships that industry in East Alabama and the state of Alabama have worked together to create with the education systems within the state. You know, our team at Alabama, at Honda, and, our, and myself, we've worked closely with Alan Smith on creating programs at Gadsden State to try and develop the future manufacturers and manufacturer leaders in the state. And I'm proud to have two of them with us here today, both Gadsden State graduates, Shane Smith, our engine department manager, and also Brett James, a graduate of the FAME program and one of our equipment and service associates at our diecast department. Brett was one of the inaugural members of the FAME, FAME program at uh, Gadsden State Community College. And after his graduation in 2020, he became a full-time associate at Honda. And he's an example of that partnership between state, industry, and education to grow people through education into long-term careers in manufacturing. You know, this Federation of Advanced Major Manufacturing Education Program, or FAME, is just one of the examples of the many programs we work together to create. Another example is the Modern Manufacturing Program, which is just now starting in East Alabama. And we're excited to partner with local high schools to help educate students in the skills and expectations required for modern manufacturing while they're still in high school. This will be a great pipeline for this Advanced Manufacturing Center, where we can begin to prepare high school students for future careers and education at Gadsden State or careers in industry in East Alabama. You know, Honda accepts the Mission Impossible, but we also understand it's our responsibility, not only as Honda, but as all of industry, to prepare our students and our residents for the future of manufacturing in the state. We're proud to be partners with Gadsden State Community College and all of you to help support the opportunities for our residents of the state. Oh, and uh, by the way, we're hiring, and the opportunities are right now, not only for Honda, but for all industry in East Alabama. So congratulations to Gadsden State Community College, to administration, to the faculty, and especially to the students, and to the workforce development team. This is a great accomplishment. We're proud of you, and we look forward to wonderful things ahead. Thank you. Hello, I'm Alan Smith, Dean of Workforce Development here at Gadsden State Community College. I want to thank Dr. Murphy for the opportunity to be on the program today. And I also want to thank every community stakeholder, industry partner, and other person who has been a contributor to our community and members of the Cardinal family for your support and effort through this entire process. Chancellor Baker, I would like to thank you for your leadership and vision to create Aspire 2030, which gave a directive to engage our community partners at Gadsden State in such a way that had not been done previously. The proposal to build this facility has been a long and diligent process. Because of everyone's involvement, this center is becoming a reality. From K-12 industry partners to educators, a local government, municipalities, leadership all around our community, and partnering workforce agencies, from industry partners with as few as two employees to as many as 7,000, your support 
for this facility has been incredible. I'm extremely excited today for our students and the people in our service area because this facility is going to be a game changer in workforce and economic development for many years to come. And now, the moment that we have all been waiting for, I present to you the future 50,000 square foot state-of-the-art workforce and development training center made possible through the Alabama Community College System and the Aspire 2030 program, the Gadsden State Advanced Manufacturing Center. This facility will have the ability to increase training capacity by modernizing our facilities and creating a center for dual enrolled technical students, traditional college students, and students that are in need of non-degree short-term training. Programs in this facility will cover and offer multiple two-year degrees, long-term and short-term certificates, and dozens of workforce credentials in the areas of industrial automation, robotics, electronic engineering, precision machining, welding, and mechanical design technology. The design of this building will allow students to begin training here at Gadsden State while in high school. This is going to provide students a head start in having a certificate or credential or degree in a high wage, high demand career. This facility will also be a training center that industries in our service area will be able to use to continue to develop work-based learning programs and apprenticeships that students will be able to participate in so that students no longer have to receive an education and then get a job, but they'll have the opportunity to earn while they learn. Now let's look at some of the renderings of some of the rooms inside the building. As we enter the building, we can see that the interior foyer will have quite a bit of viewing space of some of the programs the purpose of this is to allow potential students and industry groups to see into training space and the modern equipment while students that are participating in coursework will not be disrupted. The first program that we see on the slideshow today is a rendering of our precision machining program. In this area, students will learn to use computers to numerically control machines for all types of industry needs and be prepared for jobs for numerous industry applications. We're currently pursuing diligently apprenticeship programs with uh, machining operations uh, in our area so that workers can take classes in this facility by day or night and be on the job where their industry wants them and needs them to be. The next area we see is our welding area. Currently at Gadsden State, we offer welding courses day and night. We have an extremely strong dual enrollment program, but each year we have had as many as 150 students that could not enter into the program. This facility will go a long way in helping solve this problem. The next area we see is for industrial automation, robotics, and electronics engineering. This will be part of our training for our FAME program. FAME stands for Federation of Advanced Manufacturing Education. Currently, we are engaged with 12 industry partners and we have six industry partners on a waiting list. This new facility will help us correct that situation. The next program we're looking at is Mechanical Design Technology. It is an awesome program where students learn CAD design, 3D printing, and additive manufacturing. It, along with the rest of the programs in the building, will lead students to high-wage, high-demand careers. We also will have a multi-purpose room inside the facility so that we will be able to host industry training events and community events to accommodate our workforce and economic development needs in our service area. The next room that you see will be called our Flex Lab. 
We will use this room to do virtual training. We will also use this room to host short-term training events so that people who may be dislocated from the workforce can gain a credential in as little as two weeks and get back to work. We also have plans of engaging middle and high school students with a host of robotics and virtual reality camps in the summertime to engage them and help them explore career opportunities and education opportunities inside this facility. Next, we have another view of the exterior of the facility, which again, we think will be a game changer in how we develop our workforce and our service area for generations to come. I wanna thank each and every one of you for being here today again. Many of you in this room have heard me talk about the proposal and the grant opportunity that Chancellor Baker laid before us almost two years ago. And many of you invited me to speak on behalf of the facility. And today, as we can see, the architects have provided us with great renderings of what this thing will look like. But as I look around this room, I see so many of you that have caught hold of the vision and recognize that this will indeed be not just for five years or 10 years, but 30, 40 years to come, this will be probably one of the most impactful things that we can do for our area and providing the workforce training that we need that will continue to develop our economy and our wonderful service area that we have. We have so many opportunities here in this area and this will just be one more tool in our arsenal for our students, whether they are middle, high school, or adult ed learners, whether they're just starting out or they're starting over, they will be able to find good, meaningful training that will lead to high wage, high demand opportunities inside this facility. I wanna thank you for coming out today and I wanna encourage you as you leave today to look at the 3D architectural videos on the screens at the rear of the room that will show more detail about the inside of this facility. Thank you very much. Thank you again for your attendance. We're honored that you were with us. Have a great afternoon.